Okay, am I audible over here? Over the web? Wonderful. Okay. From today, we are going to learn very, very important tool of Docker, which is going to stay for a long time. So, whatever we discuss is very important. Not only for your careers, but for the organizations who are going to hire you. Because this is the future what companies are looking at. Okay. So, without much further delay, let us just get started into it. Okay. But before that, let us just think about a situation and and that situation will basically define what docker is doing okay not audible now tv got rattled and now is it better yeah okay so we are all going to start a startup company and we don't have much funds Okay, we don't have much funds, but we are trying to build a mobile app and a web application. This is a this is a scenario. Okay, so to build this and to deploy it onto the production, what are the things which we require? You know, web web application is going to market look well known. I want to go into market and I want to make business out of it. Okay, think of this app as something like an uh, Swiggy or Food pan or whatever it is, whatever makes sense to you, book my show, anything. Okay, so I have to build a website, I have to build a mobile app, I have to go to the market, but the whole problem is I am not that funded. Okay, so what is the traditional approach whenever you want to deploy software? You buy servers, wonderful. You buy servers, and then basically, if I require a server of 12 GB. And if I just give an estimate of that to an IT IT personnel, they would be basically buying something more than that, because they don't want to listen from me or us saying that okay, hardware whatever we have purchased is no longer eligible or no longer is meeting our needs. Make sense? Okay. But unfortunately, what it turns out to be is we are not using 16 GB of RAM. We are our application is just using 8 GB. Okay, so what about the rest of the 8 GB? Unused memory. It is it is unnecessary investment, right? Yeah. The same comes with I'm just I have given you the example of CPU. That's it. Uh, RAM. That's it. What about CPU power? What about the storage cost? Because we have paid all of this. And uh, to purchase a server, do we need to pay upfront or can we pay after? Monday valga? Yeah. So. Whatever we give earlier, let us call it as capital investment, and I would be calling it from now as capex. When I say capex, it is capital investment. Okay, and to maintain that server or servers, do I need an uh, personal around it? Do I need an infrastructure around it, like a closed room with a AC, with a fire extinguisher, and all of that? That is not that is not uh, cheap, right? It takes hell lot of cost for that. Okay. Does it make sense now? So this is the situation which we are in. Okay. So let us take the situation forward and discuss about the various technologies that have came. Okay. And then uh, we would be discussing about virtual machines, how virtual machines solve this problem, and now how how am I saying that containers are better than virtual machines? Okay. So let us see this evolution so that we would be able to understand. But our scenario is clear, right? We want to basically. Deploy application, but the whole problem is we are not that well funded. We are not companies like Microsoft where it is okay. Yeah, it's okay. Let two of the servers are not in use for this project. Let us move to other project. Okay, we have only one project. So let us just take that assumption into mind and let us look into to find out what does what can Docker do or what can a container do basically. Okay, fine.
how many of you know about virtual machines or at least use at least once okay so let me put my question differently how many of you don't know about virtual machines okay Absolutely. Okay. We all know this, right? Applications runs businesses. That's how that's how we get money. Okay. The Swiggy gets money when uh, you order food on Swiggy app because there will be some commission driven uh, stuff. You Ola gets money when you book a cab. Book my show gets money when you basically use the app. So applications are basically these companies get revenue when you use applications or when there are applications. So that's the whole point which I'm trying to tell over here. Applications run businesses. And we are all we should be all clear about it. And this is this is nothing technical about it. Applications drive revenue for your companies. Yeah. And applications also run on servers. The moment I say server. Okay, first thing is I would have upfront capital investments, capex. Okay, and apart from that, to get the server, I will not be getting it immediately, it will take some time, right? Make sense? Yeah, you would have upfront capex and ongoing opex. When I say opex, it is operation costs. So, I have both of these on this server. Okay, and let us assume that we are on a situation where our server is not in use. The 8 GB situation which I have told. We have purchased a 16 GB RAM server, and actually what we are using is just 8 GB out of it. So 8 GB of RAM is un unused, and approximately uh, half your CPU speed is unused. More than 50% of your storage is unused. So that is all waste of your money, right? So is there any solution to this? Okay. And people have came up with an option called as hypervisors. What is that? Hypervisor. Hypervisor is nothing but a virtual virtual machine or virtualization technology. Virtual machine is a basically a machine within your machine, which is not real. For example, I want Ubuntu, and what is the laptop which I have? Windows 7, right? I would install VMware or I would install VirtualBox, and in that I would install whatever operating system which I want to, and I would be launching that machine. Okay? So actually, it is not a physical machine. But it will have all the capabilities of a physical machine, where you can uh, uh, do whatever you can do on a, basically, for example, if you have taken Windows, I can give the same presentation from the virtual machine also. Okay, so everything is possible over that. So whatever is possible from the physical machine is possible, but the whole point is, it is not physical. Okay, that was the technology of hypervisors or so-called virtual machines. Okay, and there are uh, three big players in that. One is Oracle, the other one is... Uh, VMware, the third one is basically Microsoft with the Hyper-V. And there are many other things like KVM, many other virtualizers also available. But when you say commercial stuff, these are the three. Out of this, VMware is highly used virtualization tool. VMware is top around that. Okay. And VirtualBox and Hyper-V are basically solutions which you can use for free. Okay. Hypervisor, what call and call, Microsoft Hypervisor. You have Windows 10 installed or you have uh, basically Windows Server 2016. You can basically have Hypervisor which gets deployed to you automatically. If that is not the case, you can still install in the older versions also. VirtualBox is a free tool. Okay, But if it is VMware, VMware player is only free. But rest of the all other VMwares like VMware Workstation, they have different product lines up. And all of that are paid ones. But let us assume that we are taking the free one. Virtual box is Okay. So virtual box looks something like this. So I can say that I want a new okay. 
Ubuntu machine, which is 64 bit. Okay, I it will have one GB of RAM. Okay, it will have a hard disk of its own. Yeah, which is of size 8 GB as of now, and I would say create. Okay, what is the format which you want? The size is dynamically allocated. Okay, and then I say create. And after this, I say start. Okay. And I'm quite sure that you know Ubuntu every operating system comes with a CD or basically a form. Okay. The software format of your CD burning is ISO. We all know we might have burnt many CDs. Yeah. So you just select that ISO over here. You can ISO file and select chain and operating system installation will start on a virtual machine. So that's how it works. This is basically how a virtualization technology is all about. Okay. I'm not going to do it this way. Yeah, but whatever it is. So you have basically got an essence of what a virtual machine is, right? So now in one, one physical server, I can have more than one virtual machine. And on the virtual machine, I would be deploying my application because the other space which is left out, I can ha I will have other virtual machine which I can use for dev or QA environments for my same project or else I can sell out to other company who is also in similar situation like me who don't have in much of a fund so that I can share basically the investments whatever I have done so I have a way now way out okay so rather than having the free memory virtualization is still a better way of looking at it do you agree to that because I can reuse my memory by creating one more virtual machine and allocate it to the virtual machine which I can use for my purposes or I can give it to someone else or so I can sell that space to someone else. Okay. Yeah. If it is a production server and if it is a physical server where my application is deployed, will I dare to touch that machine? No, right? Now I would have a physical machine on a virtual machine. That virtual machine I will not be touching it. Guys, how many of you are not getting uh, audio? reply It's fine. Again, mother, I think it's your problem. Okay. Okay, so now I can take one server and that one server I can install multiple virtual machines and the best part is if my developers or architect says that I need 4 GB, I can just give 4 GB now because I can increase it at any moment. Okay, it is easy for me to increase uh, RAMs and all of that because it is not physical. I can just increase space, I can increase RAM, whatever it is, whatever it is, it is, it makes it much more flexible for me. Yeah. Even if that machine dies, it is easy for me to bring up other virtual machine. If it is physical machine, it takes a lot of time. Make sense now? Technology is looking good, right? This is what your VMware or virtualization, vSphere, all of this. And there have been, there are many products right now which are deployed on this. Because this technology makes sense, right? Now, there is a trouble with this hypervisor. Now, let us assume that... <clears throat> On a 16 GB server, whatever we have taken, let us assume that it is not 16 GB, it is 32 GB. Okay, and we have four companies, we got some four companies where they want to install four applications. Okay, so each company, one virtual machine. And on that virtual machine, one application. Make sense? Right? So, basically you have, you will install virtual machine and in that virtual machine you would be installing operating system. And on that operating system, you would be installing your application. Make sense? Yeah. What is bad about it? It is looking good, right? There is no problem. It is far better than the physical scenario which we have spoken about. But what people have thought is, okay, let me try to understand this. Okay. So on a server, will we have an operating system? Actual physical server operating system untunda? Untunda? Okay, we will have an operating system. It might be Windows or it might be a very thin layer of uh, operating system which is given by these guys. Okay, so we will have an operating system. 
and then we have virtual machines and in that virtual machines are we having operating system yes and in that operating system i'm installing an application i'm quite sure that everyone here has used windows right you have taken 4 gb of ram wonderful okay so when you open task manager you will it show 4 gb is free why there is some amount of memory space and all the other cpu which is utilized by your operating system do you agree to that yes what if if i can think of a technology where i can remove that operating system overhead prati virtual machine lo virtual machine what is the best part it gives me an isolated area so for example we have four virtual machines over here virtual machines one everything is different than virtual machine two stuff so that isolation we want okay but the whole point is operating system comes up with some overheads let us assume that on all of these four servers i am installing windows server 2016 is it free first thing is it free windows server you have to pay for microsoft so rather than one license you are paying for four licenses is this a cost increase or decrease increased and apart from that windows server 2016 requires at least 4 gb of ram to work just for operating system concepts okay so 4 gb is anyway gone out of your virtual machine you have to give more than 4 gb for your application so let if you give 8 gb 4 gb goes for your uh, operating system and 4 gb goes for your application why do i need to waste all of my resources and computing power on operating system is there not a better way of looking at this this thought has given birth to a technology called as containers and by the way this is not a new concept okay it is not a new concept it is it is a old concept which was overshadowed by vms which was overshadowed by the other programming aspects but this feature of container whatever we are going to discuss was there in linux from day one but no one has explored this and deen valla inta upayogam untadu anna vishayam evaru gurtinchaledu appudu varaku okay it is it is uh, it is very much not a new concept but what these guys have done is they have utilized that components they have utilized those features and they have gone very uh, what do you say next level into development of it so that it becomes easy for you and me to deploy applications like that so it was there but it was not easy what docker has done was it has taken that concept it has made it easy for you and me to deploy applications with that removing operating system overhead so when i say i have not shown you container yet but when i say i am going to container i am going to remove that operating system overhead of the virtual machine so the so called isolated areas of our application will not have operating system overheads make sense okay so it will be using the underlying operating system of your server okay fine so why we required four vms first of all because four belong to different companies four are different applications each application requires its own space to run its own private area to run right so that concept will still lie container kelle kinda server operating system vaartunnam okay that's what i'm trying to tell in server you are in container technology you are using the underlying server's operating system that doesn't mean that you will not get an isolated area you would for your application it is still an isolated area make sense so we will get all the benefits of isolation and we would also remove the overhead of operating system that's what the technology which we are looking at okay so that is containers and containers look something like this they are not heavy weight they are very light weight the blue boxes and in that blue boxes you are seeing applications directly and blue box is an isolated area ante me application ki maatrame unde private area in that no one can get into only your, for your application basically that is an area which you have to run on and me application if you see from your applications angle the container will look as if it is an operating system container application ki ela kanapadutundi ante operating system lage kanapadutundi kaagapothe underlyingly 
it will it is not it will not have its own operating system but it would be using your server's operating system make sense but for your application it will still look as if it is work, working in a virtual machine because it will have all the private spaces all the other stuff and uh, and all of that so now can i launch more containers now because i i don't need to install 4 gb I, my 4 gb is saved now on every app because i am not installing uh, operating systems anymore my cpu is saved now so now what i can do rather than four apps i'm just hypothetically telling i can go more than four but let us assume that we can go with eight apps is it not better to your organization yes and eight apps are works in isolation it is not that everything is related to each other make sense yeah so that's the whole concept of container that's why it is famous yeah mm so basically container is nothing but a linux kernel on top of it if you want any operating system features it de depends on you how to configure okay what it gives you is a very basic operating system features very very basic for example why your application requires ubuntu features first of all that's a wrong way of coding your application should not expect an operating system to work ideally i'm just telling an ideal application but if it requires you can still do, do that because what is an ubuntu it is nothing but a set of libraries written on top of linux kernel do you agree to me on that so i have a linux kernel already i would add that set of features to that yeah yes 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 yeah hmm yes yes you are an administrator right yeah the problem is this works when you think with respect to the application not with respect to the operating system that's the whole point when you read any doc, doc when you uh, basical stuff the whole point what docker think docker try to tell us think in terms of application not in terms of operating system if you think docker as an operating system it is lean it is not as good as what your virtual hypervisor is but imagine that on your hypervisor you are launching a web application an apache service and on an apache service you have a website okay think from the perspective of website does this look good the difficulty which you might think you, you you would have is if it was ubuntu i can easily log in i can do many things automatically okay here we do we can it is not possible for you to get all of those liberties yes but your application is running better your application is performing better because you give the same amount of ma memory or ram whatever you used to give to hypervisor and your application performs double the speed is it good for your organization as an administrator you might not like it i i do i do understand okay it's just the perspective but what we have at least observed or you would also observe is if you take an application and install it on a hypervisor like virtual machine and same application with same amount of ram install it on a docker and see the performance of both of them you would see docker performing very well yeah whenever something is going greater there are some features where it would be cut down so the features that you would might not have is you might not have a full blown operating system details for example uh, whatever is trying to tell, tell us if i want a syslog services probably yeah i might need to do it on my own but we do all of this on our own because we are getting benefits that's the whole point yeah makes sense so docker works very well or looks very good when you have a top down view look from applications always applications stand first not operating systems so for example if you have been a lover of a linux operating system if you have been an administrator you would always have a bottom up perspective so i would have an operating system then i would install the certain softwares and then on top of it i would be installing an app that's how we are been doing the work till now but now this technology suddenly tells you that don't think that way think it in a different way so that's why it, this technology is working okay so best part is administrative efforts are reduced in this okay you don't need for example if you are maintaining 10 hypervisors you can easily maintain 30 to 40 containers so that's that's a whole point okay makes sense yeah hmm hmm yes okay so 
basically docker would expect certain operating systems it would not work everywhere okay so for example uh, docker initially was expecting linux operating systems now it works on mac and windows okay and uh, it is working on raspberry pi so there is not every environment you can take docker to it has to support it right yes yes there has to be an operating system which docker you can install docker so that you get containers okay make sense now let us try to basically see both of them side by side okay but i am not telling if you see from a application perspective this is the advantage which you have but if you look into backups i can get into that machine i can do many things uh, over here in if it is here i can control a lot with respect to my application here you might not have all of that features but your application will have a free space to run on that's a whole technology why is this technology very important okay so from tomorrow right tomorrow if i'm not wrong from tomorrow we have big billion days right amazon and flipkart are coming with offers right let us assume that i am thinking with respect to vm technology okay in vm what we do is to host website okay we would take a full blown operating system we would install a web server and that in that web server i would install the complete application do you all agree to that yes and when these kind of days come what would i increase i would increase the number of servers which i have okay makes sense this is all logical right now amazon's application if you take into consideration there are many parts into it but on big billion day will all the parts be busy anni parts busy untai registration ekku avuthay aa time lo the most busiest part on that day would be a shopping cart kind of a stuff okay but can i take virtual machine kind of a technology or i'm not i'm not against virtual machine i'm just telling this way of deployment okay and just only increase the capability of uh, shopping cart can i do that no because you are if you are increasing you are increasing the complete application make sense now what companies are doing is they come up with something called as microservice just remember i am just telling you a very simple understanding of microservice so what is a microservice is they take an application and they break into multiple services and each service they host it on container right now let us assume that micro uh, then if aws site will have these three micro services registration micro service where only registration occurs and then we would have shopping micro service and then seller micro service seller is if you want to sell goods right so on that day what is the micro service which would be very popular shopping micro service so i can only increase the number of shopping micro services but i can leave my registration and seller micro services like that itself is it not save of save of uh, is it not i am not saving cost yes so application i am breaking down into multiple individual services and i can increase or decrease the size of or the number of servers where or the number of containers where the services are running for example i have 20 lakh users connected then i might have let us assume that for every two users we would have one container right just mathematically i have 20 users trying to do registration so i will have 10 containers right so i have 20 users to basically one virtual machine then i would have same 10 virtual machines but what is stress, less stressful in terms of memory and in terms of cost yeah and you are not scaling complete application you unnecessarily don't scale registration services that's the benefit which you get okay when i say docker i am not speaking any administrative benefits i am speaking benefits of your application make sense you can individually scale for example freedom 251 uh, mobile it is it is it is a flop idea i am not worried about the idea but on the day what was happening registrations so i can only basically scale the registration services rest of it i can leave as is because on that day demand is for registration that's the whole point so you can not only increase servers in the entire server and entity matha application increase chestaru but now you can increase the speed 
or number of users to parts of your application, which was not possible earlier. Or even if it was possible, it was a very costlier alternative. Now it is very simple. Okay. You take rather than four applications, let tell that these are four microservices of the same application. Okay. You still have a space to run four. So increase one microservice and make it four times. And uh, is the registration service and kundo. Let us assume that this is a registration service. This is basically your shopping service. This is seller service. So this is again shopping service. So I have two shopping services and one registration and one seller service. If I if the users are more, I would be increasing one more shopping service. I would be increasing one more shopping service. So I can I can do that. But here I have to increase the complete Amazon shopping site. In virtual machines, the, the way we deploy is we deploy the complete application because we have operating systems. We can't basically bear. For example, if I de deploy microservice, a microservice typically takes 512 MB to run. That's basically how they are designed. Let us assume that I install Windows Server or a Ubuntu operating system. That itself will take 2 GB. So does it make any sense for me to deploy a 512 KB application on uh, on the operating system which takes 2 GB? Makes sense, right? 512 MB this container container. Ante ante means you general ga chahiye. So 512 MB container this ko chhi 2 GB operating system lo run jaise operating system lo pehle sensible is it? Does it like sound like a sensible idea? That's the whole point where I'm coming from. Okay. So yes, all of this comes down with the cut down of access which you have. You cannot expect the same access to your servers. It, these are containers, right? They have very very linear access to it. Okay. So that for that we need to learn many things. Okay. So how can I take backups? How how is it that let us assume that I have a database in my container? How can I basically get into it? If there is something wrong, how will I correct it? Okay. What will happen when something goes wrong? Where will I see the logs? That is what our journey all about us. Okay. So initially we will be starting with one container. Okay, and then slowly we will go to the scenarios where we try to orchestrate. When I say orchestrate, we are working with multiple containers, right? Makes sense? Sounds like a good idea? Yeah, this is a very good idea in terms for your companies because it saves a lot of costs. Okay, so you see any DevOps position, it is very very important. Okay, and this is a technology where we got lot of jobs, so it is very very important also. Okay. So not only we would look into what this is, we would also try to understand how it works, but not today. So let's not stress us too much with too much information. Okay, fine. So this is the, this was the whole idea, right? Okay. So we have not we are not paying for four operating systems now. We are paying for only one operating system. Okay. And then we still have free spaces. Okay. Does it sounds like an idea? Sounds good. By no means I am not say, telling that virtualization is a bad technology. No, no way. It is a far better technology and it is much more used technology. Even today, virtualization is more used than containers. That is a fact, right? But whenever you are thinking of lean services, whenever you are thinking of applications too much, then this is a better way. Do you agree to all of this? Looking good? Yes. This is where your companies want to be. That's why you see job postings where they say Docker, microservice. Do you know how to create containers? How to scale containers? The whole point is this. The, your company wants to take these benefits of all of this. Okay. Make sense? Okay. Hypervisor was a wonderful technology when compared to whatever problem statement which we had on, on the physical servers. Now, when we take the problem statement of the hypervisor, this looks as a better technology, right? Mm. Yes, yes, yes. Where do all the applications store, save the data? They save it in memory or database? Database, right? So the database is same for all the containers. That's that's how it works, right? Yeah. Pardon me. Yes, yes. Yes, absolutely. Because you have an operating operating system in your hypervisor already, right? What Docker? Yes. 
yes 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 absolutely absolutely we would be doing all of our samples on uh, amazon cloud so which is much like the state scenario which you are asking about yeah 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 so fine so if you think of docker docker had started as a company which is called as dot cloud okay and they were trying to make some pass services in the cloud platform as a service kind of applications which they were trying to make so to test that they wanted something and they have created docker the pass service which they have built no one was interested in that okay the company everyone was interested in this project which they called as docker okay so that's how the company has changed its name from dot cloud to docker and they are working only on docker now and while the company but in a major uddesham work out all by product is something which has called gotten the fame and uh, they have they have received very huge fundings from different players okay so now we have docker inc and docker inc has something called as docker project and this is what we would be using and uh, when for example we have started a company and it is a huge success okay and we are all uh, let us assume that we are all uh, young uh, entrepreneurs we get excited with the request and we try to do everything that is the same thing what docker was also doing why we move to docker was because docker is lean do you agree to that docker ki altaniki hypervisor no one benefit so less kodaniki okay okay reason enti because docker is lean container technology is simple okay but what these guys were trying to do was they were trying to bring in all the features so then all the companies said that please don't do that okay the only part which we like about docker is its its slim nature don't make it fat okay so that's why what they have what docker has done is they have formed open container initiative and in this there are members from multiple companies you have members from google you have members from microsoft you have members from from various companies and what is the responsibility of this is they ensure that docker or this container technology is lean if there is any request for a new feature which which basically demands any adding fat to this container they will not approve it okay and whatever open container initiative has approved that are, those are the only features that docker has to work on so that's how they have worked it, worked it out otherwise they were making this container again like a hypervisor which doesn't make any sense okay we go to hypervisor if we want really all the benefits of operating system no doubt about it even today that is a call okay but if you are looking with respect to application then we go for containers or dockers okay and containers are supposed to be slim they will not have all the features they will not have all the benefits of uh, your uh, virtual machine or uh, hypervisor you will not have all the all those benefits yeah you wanted it to be slim you wanted it to scale dynamically then we go for docker so to contain or to basically look out that these guys are working only on those aspects there is a open container initiative right yeah. what kind of work will these dockers do okay very important question i have said that it is application and then fine okay can i install uh, microsoft uh, uh, office in container can can i use that container in my machine no okay it is not about desktop applications right it is all about server side applications it is about websites it is about web services it is about mobile services okay make sense so it is about some application which which has a client server kind of architecture where there is a some client trying to connect to this okay if it is a stand alone it doesn't make any sense when i say stand alone windows uh, uh, windows applications right or uh, stand alone applications like for example uh, what is the other application chrome browser you cannot have a container for a chrome browser because chrome browser is something which you have to have on your machine to connect to something else so here using container technology the applications which we are going to de develop or use are basically the servers or the applications which require some clients to connect to it make sense yeah and when i say these kind of applications there are two kinds of applications which are present in there they are stateless and stateful okay when i say stateless okay these applications don't remember anything you ask them to do something they would do and they would give you the result that's it okay stateful they would try to store the result right if your application is storing the result 
then it becomes stateful. So is a Docker container, Docker application good for stateful or stateless? It is for both. Okay. But if it is stateful, then you have to do some extra work. Okay. If Docker says that I am only for stateless applications, no one would have used Docker because every application has some sort of state. Right? So by state, don't get me wrong with database applications. Database Alantivika. For example, you have a calculator, simple calculator application myself. Okay. So a calculator application becomes stateless when someone calls the calculator and says that add me two and two, you give four. That is stateless. When someone asks for two and two, you would say that you would add that and you would store that this user had asked two and two for me in somewhere in C drive or D drive. That becomes a stateful application. Okay. So Docker is works very well or there is nothing you need to worry about when you are working with stateless applications. If it is stateful application, you need to do some more work. That's it. Make sense? Yeah. Okay. And you go to any cloud provider, any cloud provider, irrespective of whatever uh, you know about. You go with the new ones, you go with the old ones, you go with IBM Bluemix, you go with the AWS, you go with Azure. Everyone is more than happy to support containers. Because this will help a cloud technology to grow very well. Okay. So that's, these are, you, many people call it, call uh, container technology as a cloud native application. The whole point around it is because they seem as if they are made for cloud. Yeah. You can scale individual servers. You can make them work in very, very better way. So every cloud has a service. For example, in Google, uh, they use something called as Kubernetes. Okay. And they have a container service which is written on top of it. In Amazon, we have AWS. In Azure, you have container engine. There are, there are many things, many, every cloud provider has support for Docker technology. Make sense? Yeah. Okay. Containers and traditional applications. Okay. So let me not get into all of this uh, technical details because this stuff I want to cover it for tomorrow. I don't want to get into it. Okay. So till here, are we clear? Make sense? Yes? Okay. Now what we would do is, we would look into our applications which we require so that you can install it and uh, we can work from tomorrow. Right? I would show you that. Okay. Any doubts till this point? Let me take doubts. This The, the application which I want to write at is uh, something different. So let me look into the online people or the web if they have any questions. Each microservice of an application acts as an independent service? Absolutely. Yes. Okay. So, so shall I draw a uh, microservice so that you would understand it better? Yes. Okay. So, MS Paint. Containers and Dockers, are they same? Yeah, I'll be answering that question. Very important question and uh, interesting question. Right. So, let us assume that this is my server, right? And in that server, I would have a web. Uh, let us assume that I have built a Java application which is for website. Okay. So what I would build is a file called as var file, and I would deploy into a Tomcat or any middleware, something like um, uh, basically JBoss, whatever it is. Okay. So let us assume that this is our middleware, a Tomcat or JBoss kind of stuff. And in that, I would be deploying my war file, which contains my complete application. Okay. And then I have a database on a different server. This is a typical uh, architecture, right? And then you would have a client accessing for that. And we call this as uh, basically a three tier or a tiered architecture where you have a database and then you have a uh, basically an application layer. And then you would have basically a client layer. Okay. Make sense? This is something which we know and we learn it from our graduation days. Okay. Now, this star is the complete application. Okay. This star is complete application. Now, let us assume that <clears throat> this application is basically very simple application which is like book my show. Make sense? Book my show. 
So let us list down some features of Bookmay Show. What are what are features of Bookmay Show? Okay. One is administration. Because an administration administrator need to add what are the data, what are the show timings and all of that. That's how we see it, right? Yeah. So and then when it comes to application features, we would have okay. Query registration. What is query? Some people don't book. They would just see the show timings. Okay, that is query. And when you just click on book tickets, then the registration starts. Make sense? Right? And then we would have notifications. That's how you get mails. That's how uh, you get SMSs from uh, all of this. So let us assume that these four now are my are different we have broken down one application one big application into these four equal parts okay so what i would do is this for four parts i would be making okay four small stars make sense rather than one big star what we have now But for your application to work, you need all of these four running. It is not just one star. Right? Make sense? Okay. So, now what is the benefit I have? I have four different stars. And each small star is capable of speaking to database. Like what a big star was. Okay. Now, I would have four stars. Which can speak to databases. Okay. So, this is microservice. Okay, so I have broken my application into very smaller parts where each part can run on its own. Okay, who does this activity? Is it the DevOps engineer's activity to really break down these applications? No, not really. All the new applications which are being developed, they are working on this. They already have an inbuilt microservices architecture. But for older applications to work in this way, it is your dev's responsibility. They have to make your application as a microservices application. Okay. Manke Wakapata war file chit in Nal Mukal Jainante Sagani Kweto Kodar Panovai. Because that is a binary file. It doesn't make any sense. Okay. So this is a devil's responsibility. Now, if you want to uh, see whether whatever I'm stating is right or wrong, you can just go to Naukri today and type for microservices and see what companies are asking about. They ask about uh, developers who have experience in converting traditional applications into microservices applications. Because at the end of the day they want to go to container technology. Okay, make sense? Okay. Now, on Friday, what happens? Tomorrow is uh, not two days. We have Jail of Kusha, right? Obviously, people will be booking, and there will be many other movies. Okay. So, from Wednesday onwards, the registration or the booking start very well. Okay. So, yeah, let us let us just name this service. This is A. This is Q. And R and N make sense, and we have one database. Okay, so we have the same capabilities of our application. We are not going back on our application now. What we basically do is queries. So Book My Show has as an application doesn't require only one query service because there will be many people who will be continuously querying uh, Book My Show. So what they have done is okay. Okay, so let us assume that they have three query services running. It is possible now because we have a smaller application. Okay, now on Thursdays, from Thursday onwards, let us assume that the registrations also or uh, uh, the book ticket res reservations also will go. It was a reservation, not registration. Sorry for that, but it's okay. R is reservation, not registration. Okay, so what we do is we would also increase. Are making sense? Okay. Is it possible earlier with the traditional model? I have to scale my complete application. I have to make this one star into 10 stars or 20 stars to really cope up the traffic. And in that case, I am also wasting unnecessary memory and space for the services which are not loaded. And then you can load just an administration notification. 
right? Why do I need to increase it? Because for that I need just one service is enough. You would have only administrative activities are very less. So then why do you need to scale your administrative service? Now you see we are looking, we are working with traffic, okay? Where users are increased, but still we are working with only one administrator, one administrative service or two administrative services. Our administrative services are not scaled as much as other services because the usage is less. That's the whole point. This is why companies want to go to the Docker technology, right? And all of this star, what we would do is, rather than putting it in an operating system, we would put it in a container. That's that's the basic concept around it. You put the microservices, okay? How how to make one big star into one small four stars? That is your devil's responsibility. Yes, but one big star broken down into small four small stars. Okay. I'm not speaking anything technical. This is called as a microservice. Right? Fine. Now does it make sense? Okay. And there was, then there was one more uh, question. Life cycle of a container. Don't worry about it, Saif. We will be starting with that tomorrow. Yeah? I didn't want to get into any technology today. Technical details. I just wanted to have a perspective, right? Okay? Fine. Is it useful for enterprise applications? Now, let us assume that we have uh, one physical server with 32 GB RAM and in that I have basically an operating system installed okay now can I install a can I install a container in that and can I have all of the stars there absolutely me physical server slow either in our office what are physical servers which you have you can use them effectively now with this technology it is not necessary for them to be in cloud you can have in this in your office also okay so docker is not a technology which is only for cloud it works Cloud have designed it very well. That doesn't mean that it will not work in your in our uh, systems. You can take this and deploy your applications in your office servers itself. For example, in our company right now, okay, we we are basically a network switch manufacturer. Okay, you have uh, routers and all of that, right? We go to the data center grid switches, and it is not feasible for us to build uh, or to bring switches every time. Because switches are very costly affair. That to a data center grade switch is very costly. So to do some feature testing, what we do is on our physical servers, we would just install, we would just have a container of a software which contains this uh, switch, and we would test the basic functionalities with containers itself. And all of this is happening in on our same servers which we have. It is not even new server. It is the same server with the old operating system only. We are not changing anything. Okay. So that's the best part of it. It works in enterprise also. And it is not necessary that you have to work on cloud. People, you might get a lot of jobs on cloud. That's the whole point which I'm trying to make. But it doesn't mean that it will not work on a physical server, which we'll be seeing uh, anyway. And there was, how are containers and uh, uh, Docker are same or different? Container and Docker are much like operating system and Linux. Container. Operating system Linux, what is the difference? Operating system is a concept and Linux is reality. Container is a concept and Docker is one implementation of it. That's it. Right? Make sense? Yeah. If you say Linux container and Docker, how are they different? At the end of the day, they are same. But if you say about the container concept, it is much like a container is a concept and Docker is a product only or an implementation of it. Make sense? Okay. Once installed for now, how many days it will be active or not will be destroyed? What do you say? Life cycle of... Yeah, I'll, I'll be getting into this. Okay, it, it depends on how you write your uh, Docker, how you make your Docker. Okay, but you can make them to run forever till you stop it or your system get crashes. Okay, so whatever is the recovery process. First of all, we don't know how to start it. So recovery is the next thing. Okay, so it's fine for today. <laughs> yeah. Fine. You can, you can do that. Yeah, we would examine that how how it happens, right? So, what is that we, we would require now? Today, do we have an understanding of understanding of Docker, especially for the people who say that we are not from technical backgrounds? Then as they technical, Okay, I have not spoken anything technical about it. I have spoken about star breaking down into four small stars. That's it. That I am I am calling it as a microservice. Right now, what are the tools that are required for us to really uh, have it or work on Docker from tomorrow? 
okay so this one this one this was a big application one big star with a operating system and a web server and a, and a big star and then now we have broken down this big star yes yes small boxes are containers this is okay here here you are asking yeah this is a web server or an application server whatever you call it yeah fine so what are the softwares which we are going to use first thing is we will be using linux machines right so to connect to the linux machines if you are mac or if you already have a linux operating system you don't require any software but the problem is most of us have windows and windows doesn't have a way to connect to a linux machine so we need some software which helps us to connect to linux machines so for that everyone tries to use this i'm sorry i don't like it so i'd be using git for windows or i'd be using something called as git bash i'll show you how to download this yeah and then for writing uh, some kind of files and i need an editor okay so for that editor i would be using visual studio code okay you can use if you uh, are not don't like microsoft okay you can go with notepad plus plus don't use notepad it is it is uh, very difficult okay notepad plus plus vi okay or atom or sublime text whatever it is okay but i use visual studio code in the class okay and visual studio code is not microsoft's uh, project for using or visual studio for developing dotnet project this is a very lightweight application visual studio code right and one more thing is i i would require you to create an amazon aws free tier account okay how many of you uh, didn't got the welcome kit welcome kit mail okay ivall entha mandu vacharu pani let me put my question differently yeah nenu vachina vallandarki welcome kit vachindi kada yes so whoever has came today please uh, give your mail ids to uh, to satish and please write them in english కొంతమంది డాక్టర్ సిగ్నేచర్ లా పెడతారు ఆ తర్వాత ఇక్కడ పజిల్ అది ఏనా ఈనా బీనా అండ్ వి వుడ్ గెట్ ఫైనలీ ఎ మెయిల్ డెలివరీ అన్ డెలివర్డ్ నోటీస్ సో వి డోంట్ వాంట్ గెట్ ఇన్ టు దట్ రైట్ ఎట్ ఇన్ అ డీసెంట్ వే అండ్ యు వుడ్ బి గెటింగ్ దిస్ అండ్ దేర్ దే విల్ బి షోయింగ్ యు ఎ వే ఆఫ్ హౌ టు క్రియేట్ ఎ ఫ్రీ టైర్ అకౌంట్ అండ్ ఫర్ దట్ యు నీడ్ టు లింక్ యువర్ డెబిట్ ఆర్ ఎ క్రెడిట్ కార్డ్ యా అండ్ దే వుడ్ చార్జ్ యు 2 రూపీస్ ఫర్ దట్ అండ్ Amazon will not they will not be deducting from from your account you have to pay explicitly so it is a safer option but we need this for devops journey yeah but maestro cards are not supported all the sbi guys okay try to find some other card only sbi account lo unna vallaki maestro card support cheyadu so ask you need a master visa or an american express card right fine so these are the three things but let us look into first two of them okay so i need git for windows right shall we write the notes git for windows open the browser yeah type git for windows please don't do that we are, we, we are people we should be more than happy to explore and then uh, basically do the stuff and whatever i am showing here is very very simple stuff you really don't need to be tech technical you might have installed chrome browser right everyone yeah anta kante kashtanga undadu ee installation ivala jupiche installation at least yeah so just go git for windows git downloads okay you choose your operating system okay it would download and once the download is finished what is that we need to do double click it click next and just click next until until it says i am done that's it okay i am stopping this download i want you guys to try it out okay once you try this one out okay right click anywhere on your operating system 
okay you should be seeing these two options yeah if you are seeing git gui here git bash here that means that your installation is through okay if you want you can just select this and open it would open a terminal okay all of that and now the other thing which i want you to do is visual studio code so vs code download okay so download visual studio code again the same thing what is the operating system which you are in select it and double click it and basically say that click next until it says i am done just remember it need these names try it in google okay but let me tell you a better way of looking at all of this okay so from today what we would also do is i would add one more thing to our installation list which i would call it as chocolatey this is very specific to the people who are on windows if you are on any other operating system ignore it okay this is only for people who are using windows okay so what you can do is go to chocolatey.org or or you can google for chocolatey okay and then you are saying install chocolatey now right click this okay and then you are seeing this yeah copy this command go to command prompt okay paste this command and click enter you would get chocolatey as simple as that but remember on windows 7 and from on uh, try to open your command prompt as an administrator run as administrator and untadu kada that is a better way of installing this make sense so what is the benefit out of this when i do this idi chese naaku vache advantage enti okay so i will show you one of the advantage okay you can execute the same command in command prompt also but i am opening powershell powershell is installed on your machines already okay because microsoft will will very soon switch only to powershell so we, we they want they want to get rid of uh, dos prompt they want you to use powershell that's the whole point okay so you can do something like this choco search git okay so there is no need for you to go to websites and download the software this this guy will do it for you chocolatey right oh, let me i i should have done only git are you getting all of this yes let me stop it okay let us uh, go over here go to the screen and let us see what are the different things which it has given it has a, it has a repository of all of that okay so so, so chocolate is we don't need to configure anything we just need to execute these commands if it is in there we would install it otherwise we would do manually okay so basically you are seeing git dot command line you are seeing github for windows you are seeing different versions over here right and now if you want to install it okay so let us install something what will we install mm it's okay let me let me install something so choco okay search visual studio code or choco search visual studio okay you can also do this choco search visual studio and choco install visual studio so first for to do that you need to basically find out the right name over here you can do lot of installations from this okay so this is the approach which you should be looking into very soon but don't worry about this so this is something which i want you to go to eventually not today for today go with the ui mode where you download and double click and slowly you would be going to this mode where whenever we want installation we would not be doing downloading and uh, double clicking till, till it says i am done we would be going to this kind of a way because this is very much closer to the way linux guys install software if you ask any linux person how does he install git he would say that i would be using a command called as apt get install git or m install git 
but you guys go to the web download it and then uh, double click it and run it so yeah now you can use the softwares like this to really achieve what people do in linux okay so both are same you can query for that okay you can query for that you can ask ever you can do the same thing so even in linux app get install git they might not know the version if they don't know how to query it so that, that, that's the same thing it tries to bring in some of the linux benefits to windows that's it. that's the whole point around it but for today download and do is it but eventually we would be going to this that's what i wanted to show to you okay fine so what is welcome kit i have not received so welcome kit is uh, basically something where they would uh, uh, show store you some of the documents share you some of the documents where you need you can, would have steps to install uh, certain required softwares for example the virtual box how do i create an amazon account so these basic stuffs they would be showing in there because that you can do it on your own because it is a quite descriptive documentation you have to just see it that and try to do the same thing that's the whole point make sense so yeah and one last update guys on, on wednesday right on wednesday generally our class right it started 715 okay and and uh, uh, basically 715 is the time when we start the class and on every day it would be till 830 only on wednesday it would be 8:15 because on wednesday i have to catch up with a meeting so aw generally my classes will be till 10 only on wednesdays my classes will be till 9:30 so on wednesdays our class timings will be till 8:15 and i am quite sure that that is not that is not a very big problem to you guys okay the problem to to the people who are there in aw is generally they come at 8:30 when i say 8:30 it is 8:45 i am already train time you know train timings right literally you can take it for granted that they are 15 minutes late so i follow the same culture yeah so so basically on uh, wednesdays aws people are expected to arrive at 8:30 right make sense only on wednesdays our classes will be for uh, one hour on rest of the days it would be one hour 15 minutes and over the weekends we would have four hours of classes so that's the basic stuff okay make sense fine so let us meet tomorrow and let us try to look at a bit more technical uh, dive into docker technology saif was asking me a question of what is the life cycle of docker okay that is something which you would start with tomorrow what happens in docker what are the different things in docker that are present okay and then we would be eventually we ending our class with knowing what are the different things that can happen in a docker make sense yeah fine guys thanks thanks for your time weekend timings are generally 5 to 7 uh, uh, in the evening yeah weekend timings are generally 5 to 7 in the evening yeah okay for the people yeah for the people who think that 5 to 7 is too much late and who stay in abroad in hyderabad yeah for you get you will get the link and you can join online over the weekends weekends dura prantallo unde vallu ade videshallo hyderabad ante miyapur itu pakka unnaru hyderabad lo chaala abroad places unnai so akkanundu vache vallandaro you can uh, basically you will just give your names to satish and he would be sending you online link